Hello and welcome back to the Lore Raider. That's right my friends, Metroid Prime 1 has been remastered on the Nintendo Switch and I couldn't be happier. But instead of coming out here with a response video looking at the Nintendo Direct or making some sort of review for the game, I'm going to tell you about the state of power scaling in Metroid Prime 1. So come along as we see what secret Samus' adventures on Talon 4 bring us. As ever, let's start with the basics. When does Prime 1 take place and what does it mean for what we already know about the scaling? Well, Metroid Prime takes place fairly shortly after Metroid Zero Mission, aka Metroid 1, which we find Sam is hot on the trail of the heavily damaged frigate Orpheon hovering above Talon 4. This places the game before the events of Prime Hunters, Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime 3, and also before the next mainline game, that being Metroid 2. One thing that we can immediately remove off the table then, for those of you who are familiar with the channel, is any notion of Samus being universe level or higher, which doesn't enter Metroid scaling until Metroid Prime 2 with the near dead Dark Samus taking the collapse of Dark Aether after Samus kicked her ass in that game. An alternate universe of the normal universe which is stated to be infinite in size. So if universe level is off the table, then what does Prime 1 hold for us? If we look back to the previous game, Samus was able to defeat Zero Mission Ridley, who is stronger than the prequel manga Ridley, and prequel manga Ridley blasted apart this mountain. Taking Zebus's 960 times Earth gravity into account, the fact about the planet even the remaster of Metroid Prime 1 kept in, this has been couched to a country level feat of attack potency, and then in the manga version of this Zero Mission boss fight, we see during the fight, Samus took no damage from Ridley's strongest laser attack in her various suit uh, during their battle and she handily defeated them. By the end of Metroid 1, notably in her gravity suit, she attains the Power Bombs, a weapon consistently shown and stated to be planet level, which she and enemies like Ridley Robot can take attacks from. With this in mind, we can move on to Metroid Prime 1. Samus, Aaron, and Metroid in general get stronger with time. For Samus, these amps are a 5 times multiplier, often from things as trivial as being smack talked by a common pirate. Given she's been hunting down the space pirates aboard the Orpheon for some time, it is doubtless that she has grown stronger since Zero Mission, especially now when she sees the menacing and marauding Meta Ridley, her hated rival, uh, and chases him down as we see early into the game. Various suit Samus, in short, will be planet level and only grow stronger into the planetary range as the game progresses. But what about speed, I hear you ask? Well, this time, we don't actually have to scale from Zero Mission's light speed Samus. You see, right at the beginning of the game, Samus chases Ridley down in her gunship, but is later stated and just blatantly shown that Ridley manages to escape, outracing her gunship. This is significant because Ridley consistently outraces Samus' gunship in the series, like how, for example, during Super Metroid, he arrives on Sarah's space colony first, having to fly from the space from SR 3D8. And Samus obviously consistently keeps pace with Ridley uh, in all their boss fights. Her gunship, which has traveled through different galaxies twice in the series, has been captured from anywhere between 30 billion to 1.3 quadrillion times the speed of light. I am personally inclined to cite with the higher calc, as the calc assumes a 10 minute flight time when the cutscene from Metroid Prime Hunters, the immediate next game after Prime 1, very clearly shows the entire flight took place in mere seconds instead. Either way, Samus is startlingly fast at this point in the timeline, but still slower than her Super Metroid self who is equipped with the Speed Booster and Shine Spark, and far slower than her Samus and Joy self who can be calculated to infinite speed for making a white hole that stretches across the entire infinite Metroid universe. Now what about hacks? Well, understandably, given this is the second game in the chronology, this is not the most hacked out version of the character. She lacks her trademark speed booster and shine spark, as well as her classic screw attack in her arsenal this time around. However, she does trade this stuff out for a flamethrower, which is interesting enough, a frost weapons like the ice spreader, and most impressively, the phazon suit, one of the best standalone suits we've ever seen in the series. The Phazon suit allows Sims to wield the power of Phazon without the health risks involved as we saw with the PED suit in Prime 3. 
Alongside this, Samus maintains her ability to hit ghosts as always, and armed with her trusty scan visor, she always has the option of finding out key information about whoever she's fighting, as well as being able to convert her defeated foes into energy and missile packs as always. And there we have it, the state of power scaling in Metroid Prime 1 in a nutshell. Now, if you want to know more about Samus' power scaling in different games or overall as sort of an overarching video, I have many a video on my channel and you'll find playlists to those uh, videos in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe as your opinions matter to me and you can tell me what you think with your clicks. Well, until then, you know how I leave you. Be nice, be safe, be wise, and please pray for a true peace in space.